What's up, y'all? Welcome to my channel. I figured we could do um, a psalm today. Psalm 37. Psalm 37, I want to do a, a, a verse by verse Bible study. I got my study Bible this time, not my tablet. Uh, get you a study Bible, physical Bible, because it's free from distractions. You know, I can, I got uh, tweaks coming in on my Bible. No notifications, ain't nobody texting me on my Bible. I can't, you know, go to TikTok or Instagram. So get you a paper Bible and get you a study Bible. <clears throat> this is the life application study Bible. Um, they have a applicable text at the bottom of every section or excerpt or chapter. Because, you know, sometimes when you read the Bible, you don't understand everything you read. And that's even, you can read the Bible every day. There still might be some stuff that you don't understand because God God makes certain stuff known and he makes certain stuff unknown. We don't know everything. But this Bible is enough for us to live this life and live it well. So, <clears throat> let's do Psalms 37. And the theme of uh, Psalm 37 is trust in the Lord and wait patiently for him to act. This Psalm vividly contrasts the wicked person with the righteous. Trust in the Lord and wait for him to patiently act. Ooh, that's a, that's a hard one, y'all, because sometimes it's not always easier. It's not always easy to wait. Um, and then some people wait too much. So let's see what this has to say. One sip. One sip before we go into it. All right, I'm just going to do the whole chapter, and then we're going to go back, and we're going to do verse by verse. There's not that much subtext, so. Do not fret. This is an NIV version. Do not fret because of those who are evil or be envious of those who do wrong. For like grass, they will soon wither. Like green plants, they will soon die away. Trust in the Lord and do good. Dwell in the land and enjoy safe pasture. Take the light in the Lord, and he will give you the desires of your heart. Commit yourself, I mean, commit your way to the Lord. Trust in him, and he will do this. He will make your righteous reward shine like the dawn, your vindication like the noonday sun. Be still before the Lord and wait patiently for him. Do not fret when people succeed in their ways when they carry out their wicked schemes. Refrain from anger and turn from wrath. Do not fret, it only leads to evil. For those who are evil will be destroyed. But those who hope in the Lord will inherit the land. A little while and the wicked will be no more. Though you look for them, they will not be found. But the meek will inherit the land and enjoy peace and prosperity. The wicked plot against the righteous and gnash their teeth at them. But the Lord laughs at the wicked, for he knows their day is coming. The wicked draw the sword and bend the bow to um, <clears throat> bring down the poor and needy, to slay those who are up, whose ways are upright. But their swords will pierce their own hearts and their bows will be broken. Better the, the, the little that the righteous have than the wealth of many wicked. For the power of the wicked will be broken, but the Lord upholds the righteous. The blameless spend their days under the Lord's care, and their inheritance will endure forever. In times of disaster, they will not wither. In days of famine, they will enjoy plenty. But the wicked will perish. Though the Lord's enemies are like flowers of the field, they will be consumed. They will go up in smoke. The wicked borrow and do not repay, but the righteous give generously. Though the Lord blesses will inherit the land, those the Lord blesses will inherit the land, but those he curses will be destroyed. The Lord makes firm the steps of the one who delights in him. Though he may stumble, he will not fall, for the Lord upholds him with his hand. The Lord makes firm the steps of the one who delights in him. Though he may stumble, he will not fall. For the, for the Lord upholds him with his hand. 
put your name right there. The Lord makes firm the steps of those. Uh, the Lord makes firm the steps of those who delight in Him. Though Chris may stumble, Chris will not fall, for the Lord upholds Chris with His hand. I was young and now I am old, yet I have never seen the righteous forsaken, or their children begging bread. They are always generous and lend freely. Their children will be a blessing. Turn from evil and do good. Then you will dwell in the land forever. For the Lord loves the just and will not forsake his faithful ones. Wrongdoers will be completely destroyed. The offspring of the wicked will perish. The righteous will inherit the land and dwell in it forever. The mouths of the righteous utter wisdom and their tongues speak what is just. The law of their God is in, the, is in their hearts. Their feet do not slip. Hmm. The wicked lie in wait for the righteous, intent on putting them to death. But the Lord will not leave them in the power of the wicked or let them be condemned when brought to trial. Hope in the Lord and keep his way. He will, my stomach is fooling. He will exalt you to inherit the land. When the wicked are destroyed, you will see it. I have seen a wicked and a ruthless man flourishing like a luxuriant native tree, but he soon passed away and was no more. Though I looked for him, he could not be found. Consider the blameless. Observe the upright. A future awaits those who seek peace, but all sinners will be destroyed. There will be no future for the wicked. The salvation of the righteous comes from the Lord. He is their stronghold in times of trouble. The Lord helps them and delivers them. He delivers them from the wicked and saves them because they take refuge in him. The salvation of the righteous comes from the Lord. He is their stronghold in time of trouble. You can be saved by believing in Jesus. All right, y'all, that was Psalms 37. Um, let's do some... <clears throat> Trust in the Lord and wait patiently for him to act. Yeah, I don't... You know, I just read and sometimes I don't comprehend everything that I read. When I read it when I read it aloud on the first go. Like in school, like they used to be like, um, you know, how everybody used to take turns reading if you were like reading a play or something. You know, people would read, this person read this act. And then they'll ask you, what did you just read? I'm like, well, hold on. Let me go back and read it. Because I was reading it out loud. I wasn't really comprehending it all the way. But let's comprehend it, y'all. Um, let's go to, let's read some of this um, application text. For, let's go to first, it has something for the first verse. Do not fret because of those who are evil or be envious of those who do wrong. Do not worry because of those who are evil or be jealous of those who do wrong. It says we should never envy evil people, even though they even though some may be extremely popular or excessively rich, no matter how much they have, it will fade and vanish like grass that withers and dies. Those who follow God live differently from the wicked in the end will have far greater treasures in heaven. What the unbeliever gets may last a la may last a lifetime if he is lucky. What you get from following God lasts forever. That's eternal life, y'all. We're going to have eternal rewards in heaven. We're not just uh, stacking up rewards for ourselves on earth. We're stacking up rewards for ourselves in heaven. We're going to have rewards in heaven, y'all. Rewards we don't even know what, like, what kind of reward. <laughs> the Bible talks about some. We get crowns. We get a mansion, y'all. I don't know. Will we have powers up there? I don't know. But <clears throat> do good on earth so you can get rewards in heaven. And I don't know what those rewards are all the way, y'all. I wish I did, but that's, that's no reason to not <laughs> try to get them, you know? So we, gonna, we just got to live righteous and put God first and let everything else fall into place. If we put God first, you don't have to worry about, um, oh, did I mess up over here? Did I, did I, did I get this right? Or am I, we can't live by the law, y'all. We got to live by Jesus because Jesus is the law. And if we put Jesus first and everything else under the law will be fulfilled. But Jesus, that's a whole other subject. Let's go back to this. <clears throat> put Jesus first, love other people. All right. Um, 
Let's go to verses four, four, verses four and five. Take the light in the Lord and he will give you the desires of your heart. Five says, commit your way to the Lord. Trust in him and he will do this. David calls us to take delight in the Lord and to commit everything we have and do our way to him. But how do we do this? David is the person who wrote the, um, this, this song. He's the author, by the way. To delight in someone means to experience great pleasure and joy in his or her presence. This happens only when we know that person well. Thus, to delight in the Lord, we must know him better. Knowledge of God's great love for us will indeed give us delight. Are you delighting in the Lord or are we delighting in other things? To commit ourselves to the Lord means entrusting everything, our lives, our families, our jobs, our possessions, our deep, dark secrets, our thoughts, our, the, 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 the juvial stuff, the important stuff, everything to his control and guidance. To commit ourselves to the Lord means to trust in him, believing that he can care for us better than we can for ourselves. Amen. Because if I, if I, if I knew what to do, I would have did it already. You know, if I had everything figured out, I would be figured out already. But I don't. And I need God to do that for me, y'all. We can't. We can't figure it out ourselves. If people could pull themselves out of their situation, they would have been done it by now. People don't have the answer. We look to people and celebrities and other people around here for the answer. We, we need to look to Jesus in the Bible for everything that we do on this earth. Because man messes up. We got to give grace to man. Because we all, we all fall short of his glory. We're not perfect. We all mess up. The, the most perfect person on earth, yes, y'all think it's the most perfect person on earth, it will mess up. <clears throat> so we got to give it to God. To commit ourselves to the Lord means to trust in him. Believing that he can care for us better than we can for ourselves. We should be willing to wait patiently ooh, for him to work out what is best for us. Wait patiently. <clears throat> I'm having a, a hard trouble of uh, having a hard time trying to figure out when to move and when to wait. But I think I just settled as, as long as you, you know, commune with God about your thoughts and your plans, and your actions. You know, it's one thing to wait um, without a plan, without any preparation done. And there's another thing to wait with the plan, with preparation. But always remembering that God's plan is the final say. God laughs at our plans. But there's nothing wrong with being prepared. You know, do we, we, we can't just be lazy waiters. We got to be active waiters. We can move, but we just got to leave room for God to work. Because if we try to do everything, try to get all the credit, get all the glory... That's our reward right there. But if we devote everything to God, give him the credit, give him the glory. No cap. Blessings, blessings, y'all. <clears throat> or lessons or tribulations or whatever that God has in store for us. He's always doing everything for the good of us. For those who love him. For those who love him. <clears throat> Let's see. Verse 8 and 9. It says, Refrain from anger and turn from wrath. Do not fret, it leads only to evil. For those who are evil will be destroyed, but those who hope in the Lord will inherit the land. Anger and worry, fretting, are two very destructive emotions. Yes, they are. They reveal a lack of faith that God loves us and is in control. We should not worry. Instead, we should trust in God, giving ourselves to him for his use and safekeeping. When you dwell on your problems, you will become anxious and angry. Yes, when you dwell on your problems, you will become anxious and angry. And it's so hard not to. They'd be like, turn it off. Give your thoughts to God. I'd be like, I'm trying. I wish it was a button. But if you concentrate on God and his goodness, you will find peace. Where do you focus your attention? That's so true. But if you concentrate on God and his goodness, you will find peace. Lord, help us to concentrate on your goodness. So I can find peace. Where do you focus your attention? Mm. Mm. Verse 11. But the meek will inherit the land. 
and enjoy peace and prosperity. <clears throat> People think that meekness means to be weak. It's actually a strength. Um, what was the situation? The story of Moses when he had, uh, you know, threw, threw the tablets at Aaron and them. God called that an act of meekness. There's a lot of power in being meek, y'all. The world sees meekness or humbleness or humility um, as a, like a, a sense of weakness, but it's not. It's so much strength in that. It's easy to lose control. It's easy to uh, go off your first emotion without thinking. It's easy to do that. It's not easy to be meek, contrary to what the world thinks. Imagine trying to be calm in a in a, a an aggressive situation where the past you would have acted out like a an imbecile, but this new you, this this creature who stayed under Jesus, you know, which is a work in progress every day. You know, you get the spirit telling you to act in meekness this time, to refrain, to hold your anger. Yeah, that's some strength. Meekness hardly seems the proper weapon to deal with enemies. God's warfare must be carried out with calm faith, humility before God, and hope in his deliverance. Jesus also promises a sure reward, reward for those with humble attitudes. You know, like everybody be saying, be unbothered. You got to be unbothered. Look at them, they unbothered. They not let nothing affect them. We got to be unbothered for the Lord. I should make a shirt. Unbothered for the Lord. You can tell a lot about a person. Character. Let's go to 21. The wicked borrow and do not repay, but the righteous, they give generously. Um, I was reading something in the Bible earlier. It was saying if you lend money out, don't expect it. Don't, don't expect for it to be returned. You know, um, if you truly lend it out, don't expect for it to be returned because it's a gift. If they can't pay it back, if you're going to hold a grudge against them, then you got to go back to your original motive from lending out that money in the first place. And then, you know, but... Let's, let's go back to that. It says you can tell a lot about a person's character by the way or by the way he or she handles money. The wicked person steals under the guise of borrowing. The righteous person gives generously to the needy. Wicked people, therefore, focus on themselves, while righteous people look to the welfare of others. The person in whom God, 23, 24, the Lord, makes the, fir the Lord makes firm the steps of those of the one who delights in him. And verse 24, though he may stumble, he will not fall. For the Lord upholds him with his hand. Yes. The person in whom God delights, remember we just, read, just talked about delights, is one who follows God, trusts him, and tries to do his will. And tries to do his will, y'all. We're not going to be perfect. We can't be completely sinless. It's not possible. We're not Jesus. We don't have that claim. It's, it's a fight within our, in our, in our, in our, in our inner selves between spirit and flesh. It's a daily fight. Yeah, every day you got to wake up. You choose God. You choose to put Jesus first, y'all. Um, <clears throat> what was I saying? Though he may stumble, he will not fall, for the Lord upholds him, him with his hand. We don't slip up, y'all. We're going to have our times where we fall, we fall back. But it's the Lord who's going to bring us back. You know, sometimes we want to run away. We don't want to read our Bible. We feel like God is punishing us. Um, all feeling, valid feelings I've had, I've had felt. But it's the, it's the more that we come closer to him, the better. I don't know why we do that. It's like we try to run away. I don't understand. In the midst of anger, I don't want to read nothing. <laughs> We're going to read anything. But that's the stuff that's going to give us peace at the end of the day. God's word is real. It's alive, y'all. You can jump in this book. Um, the footnotes for that says, The person in whom God delights is the one who follows God, trusts him, and tries to do his will. God watches over and makes firm every step that person takes. Mm. If you would like to have God direct your way, then seek his advice before you step out. Yes. Mm. Before you get your manifestation goals list prepared, you know, you're doing your thing that you saw on TikTok or Instagram, before you get all these lists and plans and whatever, prepare. Talk to God first. Consult with God first. Make a list. Pray over each item in that list, y'all. 
Um, ask God to reveal scripture to you for that list. Maybe you put on my list, I want to increase my business for number one. Then go on Google, type in, in business script, business related scriptures and read scriptures with the uh, number two. You say, I want to get a car. Um, I don't know. Read about. It's a, it's a material item. It's a material item. But like read about, I don't know, just read something about how to get wealth in the Bible. What does the Bible say about wealth? You know, just uh, your attitude, your, your ain't, you know, anxiety, whatever you put on your list. Research the internet, type scripture at the end so you can go back to the word. That's how I usually make, um, that's how I usually get related scriptures for the things I'm looking with. Because sometimes the Bible not going to be like, oh, um... I don't know. I'm having an issue trying to set up a Shopify store. I just can't go to like Shopify 37 verse 2. It's going to be about like business. It's going to be talking about business values and goals and God's, you know, God's working toward the, the way that we should do things. That's why I like to do that. Um, and then verse 25, we got one more love, y'all. Verse 25, it says, I was young and now I am old. Yeah, I have never seen the righteous forsaken, nor his seed begging for bread. Because children starve today, as they did in David's time. What did David mean by these words? David is observing God's provision over a lifetime. Though there are unfortunate exceptions to the general principle, God provides for his own people. Yes, he does. The children of the righteous need not go hungry because other believers can help out in their time of need. In David's day, Israel obeyed God's law that ensured that the poor were treated fairly and mercifully. As long as Israel was obedient, food would be available for everyone. When Israel forgot God, the rich took care only of themselves and the poor suffered. And that's still going on today. The rich always take Always take advantage of the poor. Always, y'all. So as light bearers of Jesus, y'all, we got to treat the poor with respect. <clears throat> um, when we see a Christian brother or sister suffering today, we can respond in one of three ways. Number one, we can say, as Job's friends did, that the afflicted person brought this on himself. That's not cool. Number two, we can say that this is a test to help the poor develop more patience and trust God. And number three, we can help the person in need. David will approve of only the last option. Although many governments today have their own programs for helping those in need, this is no excuse for ignoring the poor and needy within our reach, y'all. There's probably some poor people that you know. It's not always panhandlers on the street. And a lot of people don't even give money to those because they feel like, oh, they are here. Well, give, you can give some change to them sometimes when you see them, y'all, because it's about your blessing. These people are poor. In the Bible, Jesus says, um, I was in Mark, he was talking about like, when you give to, yeah, I can't find it right now. When you give to the poor, you give to me. When you're helping out the sick and the lost, you're helping out me. Because Jesus is he, Jesus cares for those people. Jesus left. Jesus will leave the ninety nine to go after the the lo one lost person. He loves his. He, he loves the people who need him. He, he loves the the unfortunate. Jesus wants. To, Jesus is amazing, y'all. He just has the best heart in the world. So we need to try to have that heart as well. Um, if you don't always carry change, we'll make a habit to carry change. Be productive about it. I'm not even just talking about panhandlers anymore. It's just like poor people, families, or maybe a family can't afford Christmas presents or a, a laptop. Maybe the household doesn't have, I don't know, y'all, anything. We just need to be cautious of the poor. Because I grew up low-income, single-family household, raising my mom. So I understand. I can relate. But y'all, you know, put God first and help other people. Lord, help us to put God for help us to put you first, Jesus, and to help other people, Lord. Help us to not be selfish, but to be righteous. These are not easy things, Lord. But with your guidance, we can do everything. With your guidance, we can do everything, Lord. Lord, help us to turn to you when times are getting hard. Help us not to run away from you, Lord. Um, Lord, just thank you, Lord, for life, strength, and health. Um 
You're just so good to us, Lord, and we don't even deserve it. Just thank you, Jesus. In Jesus' name I pray, amen. All right, y'all, that was today's plan. Um, this Psalm 37, I wanted to just do, um, this is a psalm today. Uh, so y'all have a blessed rest of Saturday, and I'm out.